Hey, I'm Sean Sager. I'm the student pastor here at Calvary. And today I want to talk to you about forgiveness. Everybody, and I mean everybody, has someone in their life who they need to forgive. And if you personally think you don't, sometime in the future, I guarantee you will. But then there are some of you who know exactly what I'm talking about. The minute I mention the word forgiveness, you instantly have someone pop in your mind. And oh boy, there's no way you could forgive this person. I know it. This person had wronged you. They had gypped you. They had abandoned you. This person bullied you. Worse yet, this person maybe has hurt you beyond healing. And for my people who have someone come to mind, you understand that forgiveness is one of those things that is easier said than done. However, as a Christian, you can't ignore Jesus' words or action when it comes to forgiveness or even your lack of forgiveness. Check this verse out. Luke 6, verse 37 to 38. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Jesus taught this. Forgive and you will be forgiven. The measure you use, and it will be measured to you. And what's the implication here? If you live an unforgiving life, if you allow that one person who just mm, makes you mad to go unforgiven in your heart, Jesus' forgiveness is not measured out to you. And what's Jesus really saying here? He's saying that if you live a life not forgiving those who have truly hurt you, you don't understand the gospel. Because you were forgiven by God when you also didn't deserve it, when you wronged God by your sin, and yet he still forgave you. And this brings me to today's passage in Luke 23, 34. Not only did Jesus teach about forgiveness, about its power, its importance, its prominence in his kingdom, he demonstrated it. Picture this, Luke 23, 34 has Jesus hanging on a cross. He's surrounded by the people who are executing him. They are mocking him, they are spitting on him, and just before they put him on that cross, they beat him to within an inch of his life. And in the middle of his execution, he said these words. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Jesus knows exactly what it's like to be wronged, to be gypped, to be abandoned, to be bullied, and even hurt, hurt to the point of no return, hurt to the point of death. And Jesus still forgave those around him and still calls each and every one of you and me in the middle of our pain and our struggles to forgive the people around us. You know, Jesus wouldn't tell us something or do something and wouldn't have lived it out if you didn't think it was absolutely imperative to your health and your spiritual growth. If you're a new believer, or even if you've known Jesus for most of your life, getting better at forgiving one another is a part of your continued growth as a new creation. Continuing in unforgiveness makes us a hypocrite to the gospel we say we believe in. And even more than that, holding on to that unforgiving attitude will eat you up from the inside out. You know what I'm talking about. Being angry with someone makes you a hollow shell. Don't allow other people to hold that kind of power over you. Instead, forgive them. And trust that forgiveness is the path towards all kinds of healing. And you know what? If you're having trouble forgiving someone, reach out to us here at Calvary. We will pray for you. We will coach you through it. We want you to be steered in the right direction because we know that living an unforgiving life is detrimental to your health and your understanding of the gospel. I want to end on the Apostle Paul's words from Romans. Romans 12 verses 17 through 21 says this, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. because Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now I'm going to pray for us. Uh, I'm going to pray for me, and I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to close your eyes and listen, and I'm going to give you a chance to practice forgiving right now. Father, Father in heaven, I want to pray for those who are hurting. I want to pray for those who are hurting because of other people. No matter what the hurt is, 
No matter what their pain is right now, Lord, I want to lift them up to you and I pray foremost for peace. And then, Lord, I pray that you direct their path towards forgiveness, towards understanding your heart and the matter more than their own pain. Lord, bless them in this moment with peace. Now, keep your eyes closed, unless you're driving or indisposed or whatever else, but I want to give you a time to practice forgiving. I want you to picture the person who needs to be forgiven in your life, especially if they don't deserve it. Just picture their dumb face, and then I want you to make a fist. Clench as tight as you can. Clench tighter than that even. Clench that fist and slowly say these words, Father God, forgive them. Say it again, Father God, forgive them. Keep saying it till your fists are tired of clenching. Keep saying it. And finally, as your hands are tired from holding on to the pain that others have caused you, when if you are ready, heck, even if you're not ready, open your palms to the sky and say these last words, Father, I forgive them. Amen.